See, the question is, which of the following is true regarding the frequency response of Hilbert transform? The options are, it is a complex function, it is a purely imaginary function, it is a purely real function, and D is 0. See, we know that the impulse response of the Hilbert transform is H of T is equals to 1 by pi T. This is the impulse response of the Hilbert transform. What is the frequency response of the Hilbert transform? Is just apply Fourier transform. If you apply Fourier transform, H of J omega is equals to minus J sigma of omega because 1 by pi T Fourier transform is minus J sigma of omega. So, what is the definition of sigma of omega? Sigma of omega is equals to 1 for omega greater than 0 minus 1 for omega less than 0. If I substitute this, then H of j omega is equals to minus j for omega greater than 0 and plus j for omega less than 0. So, if you observe that, I can say that it is a purely imaginary function. So, the right option is B is the right option. Okay, see the question. Consider two sequences x of n and h of n of length 12 and 20 respectively. So, x of n length is 12 and h of n length is 20. This is the information given. The zeros to be padded for x of n and h of n in order to find their regular convolution y of n using the DFT respectively. Okay. See, in order to find regular convolution is nothing but linear convolution. In order to find linear convolution from using the method of DFT, how many zeros we have to pad to the x of n and h of n? See, the length of the linear convolution is, suppose if x of n length is capital N and h of n length is capital N, then linear convolution length is equals to m plus n minus 1. This is equals to 12 plus 20 minus 1. See, that is 31. This is the length of the linear convolution. Okay. In order to calculate linear convolution by using DFT method, compulsory both the sequences must be Pad at both the sequences must be of length this 31. Then only we can evaluate linear convolution by using DFT method. Okay. So both the sequences x of n and h of n must be of length 31. Just observe how many zeros I have to pad at such that both the sequence length is 31. See x of n 12. In order to get 31 length, how much how many zeros I have to pad? 19 zeros. That is nothing but 31 minus 12 is equals to 19 zeros to x of n and 31 minus 20 that is equals to 11 zeros to h of n. So, what is the right answer is 19 zeros and 11 zeros. So, the right option is A is the right option. See the question, the number of complex multiplications and additions required to implement 16 point DFT using radix to FFT are respectively. See, 16 point DFT is given. 16 point DFT is nothing but capital N is equals to 16. So, by using radix to FFT algorithm, number of complex multiplications required are, so number of complex multiplications number of complex multiplications is equals to n by 2 log n base 2 this is equals to 16 by 2 log 16 base 2 
this is equal to 16 by 2 into 4, this is equal to 32. These are the number of complex multiplications required. Whereas the number of complex additions, number of complex additions are n log n base 2, this is equal to 16 base 2, that is equal to 64. So number of complex multiplications are 32, number of complex additions are 64, so the right option is, A is the right option. The question is, what is the Laplace transform of x of t equals to e power 3t u of t minus e power minus 2t u of t? Okay, see, from the standard Laplace transform pair, e power a t u of t, Laplace transform is 1 by s minus a and the ROC is sigma greater than a and e power minus a t u of minus t is minus 1 by s plus a and the ROC is sigma less than minus a. So by using these two standard pairs, let us find the Laplace transform of the given signal. So x of s is equals to, see e power 3t u of t, Laplace transform is 1 by s minus 3 and the ROC is sigma greater than 3. And the second one Laplace transform is plus 1 by s plus 2 and the ROC is sigma less than minus 2. What is the resultant ROC? Resultant ROC is ROC1 intersection ROC2. When two signals are added or subtracted, multiplied, divided, the resultant ROC is intersection of individual ROCs. So what is the resultant ROC in this case is sigma greater than 3 intersection, sigma less than minus 2. So greater than 3, less than minus 2. There is no intersection phi. That is no ROC. So no Laplace transform. So there is no Laplace transform. This is not the Laplace transform. So the answer is no Laplace transform for the given signal. So the right option is D is the right option. See the question, consider the following statements related to Fourier series of a periodic waveform. Okay, it expresses the first, first statement is, it expresses the given periodic waveform as a combination of DC component, sine and cosine waveforms of different harmonic frequencies. Yes, this is true. Why? Because what is the trigonometric Fourier series expansion of the given signal? X of t is equals to A naught plus sigma n equals to 1 to infinity a n cos n omega naught t plus b n sin n omega naught t. So what is the statement is it expresses the given periodic waveform nothing but x of t expressed as a combination of DC component and sin and cosine waveforms of different harmonics nothing but n omega naught is nothing but different harmonics. Yes, first statement is true. So, first one is true. So, this is the first one. It is true. Next, second one. The amplitude spectrum is discrete. Yes. The Fourier series spectrum is discrete because, see the frequency components, it, is, it exists only for integer values of 
fundamental angular frequency. So the spectrum of Fourier series is discrete. So discrete. Yes, this is also true. Next, third one. See the third one. The evaluation of Fourier coefficients get simplified if waveform symmetries are used. Yes, this is also true. Okay, so waveform symmetries. Yes, how it is true because if the given signal satisfied even symmetry, then only a naught a n exists, b n is zero. If the given signal satisfies odd symmetry, b n is exists, a naught a n are zero. If the given signal satisfies half a symmetry, then odd harmonics are exist. So because of this, if the signal satisfies some symmetry conditions, then the evaluation of Fourier series coefficient is going to simplify. Okay, so this statement is also true. <coughs> Fourth one is the spectrum is continuous. No, it is false. Fourier series spectrum is discrete. This is true, but this is false. Okay, so this is a false one. So it is false statement. So what are the correct statements? One, two, three are the correct statements. So the right option is D is the right option. Okay, consider the following statements. Fourier transform is a special case of Laplace transform. Okay, we'll see. What is the expression for Laplace transform is x of s is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e power minus st dt. This is the expression for Laplace transform. What is s is sigma plus j omega. If I substitute this, x of s is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e power minus sigma t e power minus j omega t dt. Okay. Now, what is the expression for Fourier transform is x of omega is equals to minus infinity to plus infinity x of t e power minus j omega t dt. Okay. This is second expression. Let us assume that this is the first expression. So once you observe 1 and 2 equations, when 1 and 2 are equal, so x of omega is equals to x of s where s is equals to j omega, nothing but sigma is equals to 0. So from this we can say that Fourier transform is a special case of Laplace transform. So first two statement is true. Now see the second one. What is the second one is region of convergence need not be specified for Fourier transform. Yes, yes, it's true. Region of convergence is nothing but it is a values of sigma for which Laplace transform is for which Laplace transform is exist. Yes. So always sigma is equals to zero for Fourier transform. So need not be specified region of convergence for Fourier transform. This is also true. Next, third one. Laplace transform is not unique unless the region of convergence is specified. Yes. See the third one. E power minus a t u of t. Laplace transform is 1 by s plus a. ROC is sigma greater than minus a. And minus e power minus a t u of minus t is same. 1 by s plus a sigma less than minus a. If we observe these two quantities, these two are having the same Laplace transform, but they are having different x of t. Why? Because they are having different ROCs. So if you don't specify the ROC, then it is not possible to tell what is the inverse Laplace transform. So Laplace transform is not unique unless region of convergence is specified. Yes, region of convergence is not specified. It is not possible to tell the lab exact Laplace transform. So this is also true. So fourth one, Laplace transform is a special case of Fourier transform. No, it is false. 
Fourier transform is a special case of Laplace transform, but Laplace transform is not a special case of Fourier transform. So this is false. So one, two, three statements are correct. So D is the right option.
okay see the statement one the sampling period of a sampled data system must to be less than or equals to 0.5 second that is ts given as less than or equals to 0.5 second this is statement one to have a bandwidth less than or equals to 0.6.28 radians per second omega m less than or equals to 6.28 radians per second okay see first we'll see so omega m is this one so what is fm less than or equals to 6.28 divided by 2 pi so fm less than or equals to 2 into pi value as a 6.28 so it is 1 hertz so what is the maximum frequency fm is equals to 1 1 hertz just what is nyquist rate fs minimum greater than or equals to 2 fm that is fs minimum greater than or equals to 2 hertz just so what about the nyquist interval ts less than or equals to 1 by 2 seconds yes this is this is given information is okay so from the given for the given signal this is the nyquist interval yes correct so what is the statement 2 statement 1 is correct what about statement 2 so the signal is fully preserved in the sampled version as long as the sampling frequency is at least twice the maximum frequency contained in the signal yes this is also true so to preserve the sampled signal compulsory the sampling frequency at least twice the maximum frequency of the signal it is a statement of the sampling theorem yes so statement 1 is correct statement 2 is correct and statement Two is the correct explanation for statement one. Okay, see the statement one. Statement one. Different signals can have same jet transform. Yes, statement one is correct. How? See, a power n u of n z transform is z by z minus a. R O C is mod z greater than mod a, and minus a power n u of minus n minus one is z by z minus a. R O C is mod z less than mod a. See here, different signals can have same jet transform. Yes, statement one is correct. Statement two, jet transform of a signal is unique only if region of convergence in jet plane is specified. Yes, correct. If you don't specify the region of convergence, then jet transform is not unique. So compulsory. So jet transform of a signal is unique only if region of convergence in the jet plane is specified. So this is also correct. So statement two is the. both are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 so the right answer is a